glory be and mercy me, we've done it yet again. Here we are, our daily walk around the graveyard. Good idea to get out today, guys. Beautiful, beautiful day, at least here in the city of Toronto. <clears throat> Clear skies, a bit windy, so sorry if the audio goes a little, but, you know, is what is. Today, what's been banging around in my head uh, has been the question, why are we so gullible when it comes to Chinese propaganda? Uh, generally, I think we're quite gullible when it comes to propaganda, uh, in, like, generally. Uh, but Chinese propaganda, it takes on a whole other level, right? Like, it's a whole other thing. Like, it, it's not like the ghost of Kiev, where we tricked ourselves into believing for a moment that there was a single fighter jet that was shooting down more planes than fighter jets would shoot down over the entire course of World War II, right? Like, these sorts of urban legends or myths. No, when it comes to Chinese propaganda, we fall for the most egregious, overt, easily falsifiable uh, lies that really render us into this sort of state of total gullibility, right? So let's tackle the biggest one, in my view. Uh, the Mao killed a hundred million people in a famine uh, during his great leap forward, right? That the Chinese killed a bunch of sparrows. I saw this per perpetuated uh, just yesterday by a, a new YouTuber spreading his stuff around, right? So this, this is a narrative that has been firmly established in the North American ethos, and you've got to be a complete and total gullible rube to believe that it's actually true. Like, even just listen to what it sounds like in your ear for just one second, that a country killed a tenth of its population, a full tenth of its population was killed off during a natural phenomenon, right? Uh, this would be a catastrophe on a scale never seen before in human history. You're seeing less people die during the Eastern, during the European plague, for God's sakes. You're seeing less death over the course uh, of uh, tsunamis, like hurricanes. Like, you gotta look at, like, meteor impacts. Like, the volcanoes wiping out Pompeii to get to this kind of level of mass destruction. Uh, and here's where it gets really interesting, uh, where's the refugee crisis? Where's any of the people uh, during the period of Mao actually commenting on this enormous natural disaster? Where's the political commentators? Where's the CIA? The fact of the matter is that when you actually look into this extraordinary claim that reaches like conspiratorial levels, like the moon landing was fake, the, the Bush did 9-11 kind of stuff. Like, you get, uh, you get nothing back. There is no commentator, there is no China watcher, there is no one during the period where the supposed famine took place actually commenting on the fact that there's a famine going on. There's no refugee crisis. If you have a hundred million people dying in China, during this period, you expect to see at least some people fleeing from it, right? When the Irish potato famine was happening, that's how I, that's how I ended up in Canada. My descendants fled the Irish potato famine, right? Like, so where are these refugees? Where is anybody even talking about it? So where does the story come from? Well, in the 80s, a couple of statisticians took a look at 20, 25-year-old data uh, misread the data, for whatever reason you want to believe they did that, uh, published it and said, oh, the only way this misreading of this data could be accounted for is if uh, there was a famine that killed all of these people. So forget about evidence, facts, forget about uh, uh, and, uh, like observations, confessions, anything like this. No, just a couple of statisticians reading some charts and suddenly China, Chinese communism is supposed to have killed 100 million people. This same sort of absurdist, like, and let's be really honest, guys, like, xenophobic and racist mindset. Like, to believe that the Chinese are capable of building, like, a 4,000-year-old civilization and become an industrial power, but the thing that caused this massive famine was that they killed too many sparrows. Like, this is some, like, literal huge buck teeth, like, slanty-eyed, big glasses, cartoonish racism that we're looking at. Like, you've really got 
to try really hard to maintain this kind of absurdist narrative that says the Chinese caused a famine that killed a hundred million people because they shot too many sparrows. Like, this is the narrative that is being put forward and that gets upvotes and that people actually take seriously. Uh, and, and this comes into the modern era with the quote-unquote Uyghur genocide, quote-unquote. Another phenomenon for which there is no evidence. There's nothing factual based in it. They literally took the vocational schools that uh, China had put up to deal with the Afghanistan refugee crisis, right, and the uh, uh, influence of war within that region. Uh, and uh, they, they take the fact that the Chinese said, well, hey, let's put up these vocational schools so that we can teach people, uh, get them integrated into the Chinese society. And what did they say to them? Oh, th those are concentration camps. We literally sent a BBC film crew inside. We've, like, we've literally done all of the things that anyone could. We have like satellite imagery and all of this kind of stuff. There's no fucking genocide. It's all coming from a single CIA agent by the name of Adrian Zenz, who literally walks around saying that I was sent by God to destroy China. Like, this is your source. This is what's convinced you. And again, it's just like a blatant racism and xenophobia that leads us to this place, where we're, we're accusing a country of a genocide, while we ourselves, by the way, are maintaining a genocide in Yemen, maintaining a genocide in Israel. Uh, uh, don't, don't forget about what's going on in the United States-Mexican border. Don't forget about the fact that the Americans have 25% of the world's prison population, pr predominantly black. Like, and for us to turn around and accuse another nat nation of committing a genocide with no evidence whatsoever, we're to the level where even the Pentagon has said, nah, nah, we, 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 can't, we, we, we can't say that there's a genocide going on in China. Like, come on. <laughs> so what is, and, and, and we have every reason to believe that our media and our, our, uh, the CIA, the largest terrorist organization on the planet, is lying to us. We have every reason to believe that these forces are lying to us. Why? Because they've always lied to us. You remember the WMD lie, right? How quickly we forget. How quickly we forget that, that we were lied into a major endless war because Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. The little baggy, right? The degree to which uh, capitalist powers are willing to go in order to foment war and to destroy people in war. And yet, when they stand up and say the most egregious, overt bullshit you've ever heard in your life, we all just go, God, that's got to be the truth. Like, it quite literally is, guys, to this point, where we're going, hey, wait a minute. They lied to us about that. And then they turn around and go, ah, yes, but what about this other thing going on here? And we go, what? I can't believe it. Like, stop. Like, stop for just, like, two minutes and actually think through the claims that are being made. Maybe do a Wikipedia search, right? Like, maybe look around. Maybe learn something about the countries that you're attempting to critique. Where's a good start? I literally had a conversation with someone about China, about, this, uh, about these supposed crimes that China has supposed to have committed, and I asked them just straight out, hey, just as a curiosity, do you know what the National People's Congress is? And they went, no, what is that? No, I don't know what that is. And I said, uh, the National People's Congress is literally the ruling body of China. So you want to critique Chinese society, you want to critique how they work, but you don't know anything about how they actually structure themselves, how it actually goes. It's astounding to watch. It's astounding to see. And so now, where do we get to in this conversation? Why do we keep doing it? Why do we keep believing overt, obvious, complete, and total frauds and obvious liars who have every incentive and every reason to lie to us over and over and over again. Is it just gullibility? I think it goes a little deeper than this. 
You see, Goebbels said, oh, or maybe it was Hitler or one of the other Nazis, said that if you tell a lie big enough and repeat it over and over again, the people will believe it. And I think there's a reason for this, and a good reason. Because everybody wants to be in the in group. No one, myself excluded of course, is pleased to be on the out group. No one wants to do anything to alienate themselves from the in group. So when you see massive border, uh, 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 massive billboards, massive screens, well-clothed celebrity-looking anchors saying things as if they're true, even though they're overtly false, right? You can look at that and think to yourself, even if you do think to yourself, that sounds probably wrong, right? Well, you're going to look at your neighbor and you're going to say, yeah, but he probably believes it, right? He probably believes it. And it's got to be believable. Look how much, look how big the story is. Look how much energy is putting, put, putting it. Look how, look how much they're blaring this over our airwaves, which we've permitted them to do for some reason. Look at how much energy is putting, put, there's got to be some truth to it, right? So you're not going to turn to your buddy and go, sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me, because your buddy might turn around and be like, how dare you, the people of China, uh, uh, that's a genocide that you're talking about, sir, uh, good day to you, and now you're on the out group, right, so better to turn and say something like, oh wow, crazy story, eh, and then your buddy, who's in the same boat, by the way, your buddy is turning and looking at you, and even if he's skeptical of the story, well, he's not going to look to you and be like, I don't know if I believe that, Right? Because why? Because you might look at him and say, Sir, this is an affront and I'm offended by you and I'm going to uh, cut you out and we'll, we, we have, our friendship is over. And so what does he do? Yeah, crazy story. Oh, wow. And that's it. And now it's established as fact. Because nobody is willing to stand up and challenge the narrative because everybody wants to be in the in group. Right? Forgetting, of course, that this is a society that's collapsing. There is no such thing as an in-group anymore, right? The only in-group that matters whatsoever are the five billionaires at the very top and their little surrogates, right? That's how you become a part of the in-group. And so we have literally no reason to believe a thing these guys say anymore. No, like, literally no reason. These are well-established, fraudulent liars. And frankly, I'm to the point where if you're going to gullibly regurgitate the garbage that comes out of their mouths as if it has any basis in truth and reality, then I don't want to be part of your stupid group. I'm happy to be on the out group. I'm happy to stay there. Ugh. So, good opportunity to say like, share, subscribe. <laughs> I guess I still do need to be part of an in-group, don't I? I still do need to make sense to some people, such as the capitalist mode of production, right? Like, such is the way of it, that uh, uh, we still have to sell ourselves for money. So, Patreon down below. We have to be supporting leftist voices, guys, right? The reason why stupid, moronic, childish stories are able to penetrate our social consciousness and become truth is because the only people who are permitted to talk are the literal Nazis, the fascists who are beside them, and the liberals who capitulate. Those are the, those are the only people who are at the panel discussion, right? That there's, there's, there's nobody actually going, uh, sounds like bullshit to me, and here's why, 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 right? There's nobody actually challenging these narratives. So we've got to be supporting leftist voices, even as we are under assault, right? We've watched powerful leftist voices get banned off of major social media outlets, we're watching an assault against the left in major and serious ways, right? And the result of it is that the only people who are going to be talking are just the capitalists, right? Is that what we want? We want the owners to basically tell us how to think and what to do. Seems to be what we do anyway. Come to my live stream, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, even if you disagree. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's chew the fat. All right, guys. Always remember... You are a quantum being, walking around in quantum energy.
The billionaires are spending hundreds of billions of dollars in the hope that you won't realize it and just stay the good little commodity they need you to be. Rebel. Revolt. Repent. Good luck. We're going to need it.